Follow Mark and Tyler as they search for a vintage travel trailer to restore in the garage. See why Easy Coupler and Dominator sewer hoses are the brand Mark prefers to use. Take an inside look at what the KOA campground in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina has to offer in the way of cool amenities and attractions. See what Mark won't leave home without in his RV toolbox. Learn how to clean and maintain your RV roof. Get an inside look at what's happening in the world of RVs for 2011 and much, much more on this episode of Mark's RV Garage. My name is Mark Polk and this is my RV garage. I got bit by the RV bug when I was 15 years old and still have it today. I started in this industry washing campers and since that time I've helped educate over a quarter million RVers on how to safely and properly use and maintain their RV. My favorite pastimes are RVs, muscle cars and motorcycles. Welcome to my RV garage. Hi, I'm Dawn Polk and I would like to tell you about some of the great RV training products and programs we have to help you learn about your RV. We offer individual RV training DVDs and DVD box sets on every RV topic imaginable. And if you prefer learning online, we offer several online RV training products as well. To get more information on all of our RV training products, please take a minute to visit www.rvconsumer.com. Happy RV learning! My son Tyler and I have been talking about restoring a vintage travel trailer for quite a while now and finally decided it's time to get serious about it. Let's look at how it all unfolded. The entire roof's rotted out. Okay, I don't think we're interested. Thanks. Okay, I don't think we're interested. Thanks anyway. Bye. That sounds exactly like what we're looking for. Is there any chance that we might be able to come over and take a look at it today? Tyler! Yeah? I found a trailer. Come on, let's go look at it. Whenever you're dealing with a trailer this old or one that's been sitting for a while, there are some concerns before you can transport it, especially if it's for a long distance. What kind of shape are the tires in? Do the lights work on the trailer? Do the brakes work? Do you have a vehicle capable of handling the weight of the trailer? And do you have the correct hitch and ball size to safely move the trailer? After all of these concerns have been addressed, you can take your restoration project home. All right, Tyler, I know there's going to be water damage, but the question is how much water damage? We need to check out the floor, the roof, and the walls. You start with the floor, I'm going to start with the roof, all right? looks pretty good, Tyler. How about the floor? It's pretty solid. Good, good. Uh, looks like we're going to have to replace some glass or else we'll have to try to find another window for this. We're, we're kind of interested in it. Uh, I have a question for you. Would you consider taking 250 for it? How about 300 $300. We'll take it for 300 I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Got it for 300 bucks. That is cool. We're going to take an air compressor, a couple tools, 
and a couple different size hitch balls just in case. Should say two inch or two and five sixteenths inch ball. See that? Yeah. Two, inch two inch ball. Good deal. All right. Fortunately, we don't have very far to go. The lights on the trailer don't work, so I'm going to have Dawn follow behind us at a safe distance, and I'm crossing my fingers that the tires can make the short trip back to the garage. The good news is the brakes work on the trailer. Dawn will be watching the trailer from behind for any signs of problems. I got the title signed and notarized, so we're taking this old trailer back to the garage to give it a new life. Well, we made it back to the garage. We don't plan to keep the old Yellowstone 100% original, but we will attempt to keep it as recognizable as possible. The plan is to restore it with some of the updated equipment you find in modern day RVs. In an attempt to keep costs down, I plan to use lots of stuff I have laying around the garage. And it just so happens that an RV dealer friend of ours was retiring, and I was able to get some parts for the restoration at a really good price. Let's get it in the garage. Okay. Stay tuned for the next episode of Mark's RV Garage when Mark and Tyler start the first stage of the restoration, the demo stage, so they can get a good look at what they're up against. Oh boy. One of the least favorite jobs you'll have to do with your RV is emptying the holding tanks. And you guys out there, guess who gets to do it? Well, at least in my case. I'm all for anything that can make this job easier, and trust me when I say not all RV sewer hoses are created equal. I have tried lots of different sewer hoses and products over the years, and the brand of sewer hoses and hose extensions I use are Easy Coupler and Dominator brand hoses. Let me show you why. This is the traditional Easy Coupler vinyl hose with the pre-assembled bayonet fittings. It easily attaches to your primary drain hose for a quick extension at the campground. These premium quality drain hoses are 18 mil vinyl covered for rugged leak proof performance and they have a UV protectant added for longer hose life. The secure rotating fittings prevents the hose from twisting and the different size easy coupler hoses can be interchanged for the right length every time. Over here is the new high-tech poly dominator extension hose with factory installed rotating bayonet fittings that provide secure leak proof connections. These durable hoses are UV stabilized for protection from the sun and a really neat feature with the dominator hose is the way it stays stretched out and holds its shape while emptying your holding tanks. 
Also, notice how the rotating fitting easily connects without twisting the hoses and how the different size hoses can be interchanged to give you the right length of hose for the campground you are staying at. The 5 foot dominator hose can be used as a dump hose in addition to adding more length as needed at the campground. When you're done using the dominator hose, it collapses for easy storage. Some campgrounds you go to will have smooth pipe sewer connections with no threads like this, and others will have threaded pipe sewer connections like this. These different type sewer connections also come in various sizes like 3, 3.5, and, and 4 inch pipes. The Easy Coupler 90 degree sewer fitting has graduated steps to connect to these different size campground sewer connections. If you look closely at the bottom of the sewer fitting, it is tapered to slide into a 3 inch smooth pipe sewer connection and seal until you physically remove it. If the campground connection is three, three and a half, or four inch threaded pipe connections, you simply screw the threaded section of the sewer fitting into the threaded pipe until it's tight. That's all there is to it. When you're done using the extension hoses, they can simply and easily be sealed off for storage using drip caps that are purchased separately to prevent any messy drips and keep storage areas clean. If you are using a vinyl extension hose and you put the drip caps on when the hose is compressed like this, it creates a vacuum that holds the hose in a compact, compressed fashion, making the hose more manageable and using less storage space. The Easy Coupler and Dominator sewer hoses and extension hoses make the not-so-fun job of emptying the holding tanks a breeze. For more information on these products or to purchase these sewer hose products, visit www.campingworld.com and type Easy Coupler or Dominator in the search box. What do I consider to be a vintage trailer? Well, when you talk about vintage trailers, lots of folks think about trailers that were built in the 30s, 40s, or 50s. Or they think about a particular brand name like Airstream, Spartan, or Prairie Schooner. I think any trailer you find today from the 30s through the 60s are classic vintage trailers. When I started to consider a vintage trailer restoration project, I wasn't as concerned about a name or era of time as I was about finding a trailer with a good foundation at the right price. I think there are lots of these old vintage trailers sitting around out there that can be found and restored back to a usable condition at a fairly reasonable cost. Find an old trailer you like the looks of, or one that has some character. If you can find an old trailer with a restorable structure at the right price, and you like the way it looks, it can make a fun vintage trailer restoration project. I say go for it. You only go around once. Have some fun. We'll be back with more of Mark's RV Garage in just a moment. Back with another viewer's question. Remember, if I use your question on the show, you receive a free copy of my best selling book, The RV Book, in electronic format. Vicki at sentimentaljourneys.com writes Hi, Mark. I've been trying to find information about orphan RVs and if they will be supported in some way or another. So far, I've come up with nothing concrete. In particular, I'm talking about a Fleetwood Discovery 2006 to 2008 model years. We understand that Fleetwood has been bought by another company and I've written them asking this very same question. Have you heard if people are having difficulty finding parts for their orphaned RVs? We are getting closer and closer to selling our house to go full timing so we are honing in on which RV will work best for us. I'm pretty much focused on the Discovery because of its floor plan and side aisle bathroom. However, we want to be armed with as much information as possible so that our choice is a smart one. Kind regards, Vicki. 
Good question, Vicki. Let me start by explaining what an orphan RV is for those of you not familiar with the term. An orphan RV is an RV that was built and sold at some point after the sale the RV manufacturer went out of business, leaving the consumer with no warranty parts or service network. Unfortunately, this happens to lots of RVers across the country during the recession. Orphan RVs have been a problem for lots of RVers as more manufacturers have closed their doors. Fleetwood, however, will continue to support RV owners in warranty parts and service. If a person owns a motorized Fleetwood product built prior to the new Fleetwood ownership, warranty work and service work will be honored at current Fleetwood dealerships. So it's safe to say there is a pretty strong network regardless of where your travels may take you. One other thought is to consider a good service contract on the unit so it will still be covered after the factory warranty expires. Just do your homework and make sure it's a reputable company with a good network of dealers around the country who will honor the contract. There are many orphaned RV owners who can't get any support whatsoever, and that is a sad fact, but motorized Fleetwood products do not fall into that category. I hope this answers your questions and concerns, and thanks for writing. The way the RV industry measures growth is by the number of RVs that are shipped from manufacturers to dealers each year. After many years of steady growth, RV shipments reached a record high 390,500 shipments in 2006. RV shipments declined when the recession hit and RV dealer inventory levels hit record lows in 2009. The number of RV shipments fell to 65,700 that year. Moderate growth of RV shipments are expected to rise to 259,600 units in 2011, according to statistics provided by the Recreation Vehicle Industry Association. Let's go to our second question. Ernie writes, Hi Mark, I'm new to the RV world and can use some help. The end of last year we bought a 31-foot Class C motorhome brand new. When we went on our first trip to Florida, everything ran fine and I stayed between 60 and 65 miles per hour. We were running pretty light as we carried no water and minimal personal belongings. All of the mileage was highway driving. What I want to ask you is if there is any way to increase this miles per gallon without voiding the warranty or incurring great cost. Maybe a new chip or something would help. I have no idea what to do. This is just a little too poor miles per gallon and will limit our use very much. I look forward to any help you can provide. Thanks, Ernie. Well, Ernie, I am assuming that your Class C is powered by a Ford Triton V10. If this is the case, you can really only expect to get a little over 8 miles per gallon on a good day with a tailwind. I'm a little heavy-footed and average about seven and a half miles per gallon on most trips we take with our 35-foot Class A with the Ford Triton V10. Of course, weight and personal driving habits have a lot to do with it, so the larger the motorhome, the more it will be affected than, say, a 24-foot model would be. There are engine tuners or chips available for most engines that improve the performance and, in many cases, fuel economy, too. I suggest you ask the local Ford dealer about performance chips and how it would affect the vehicle's warranty. Lots of folks talk about upgrading to a performance exhaust system or dual exhaust system and upgrading to a cold air intake system. These types of modifications can result in a slight increase in fuel economy, but you will need to determine if the cost of these improvements outweigh the benefit they offer. The good news is there are a number of things RV owners can do to maximize their fuel economy. Let's take a look at some right now. One shocking discovery was that for each 5 miles per hour you go over 60 miles per hour is equivalent to paying 10 cents more per gallon. So if you're traveling down the interstate at 75 miles per hour, add 30 cents to the price on the pump. Wow! that can add up quick. Talk to other RVers that have a motor home similar to yours. Compare gas mileage. If there is a significant difference, compare notes and try to determine what makes the difference. Something as simple as a clean air filter can improve your fuel economy up to 10%. Checking and adjusting your tire pressure to the proper pressure can increase fuel economy by 3% 
not to mention preventing premature tire wear and tire failure or blowouts caused by over or underinflated tires. Tires can look normal when they are seriously underinflated. Use a quality air pressure gauge and check your tires when they're cold before traveling more than one mile. Excessive idling waste fuel. If you're going to be sitting still for more than a couple of minutes, shut the engine off. Using overdrive whenever you can saves fuel by decreasing the engine's speed. Using the cruise control whenever possible saves fuel because it keeps the vehicle at a constant speed rather than variable speeds. This applies when you are driving on a relatively flat surface. Keep in mind the over 60 mile per hour rule applies here too. Keeping the vehicle tuned up and in top running condition saves fuel. A poorly tuned engine can lower fuel economy by 10 to 20 percent. Poor emissions and or a faulty oxygen sensor can cause a 40 percent reduction in fuel economy. Can you believe that? A 40 percent reduction. Following the recommended service and maintenance schedules will save you fuel. Using the recommended grade of motor oil will increase fuel economy by 1 to 2 percent. Using synthetic oils will increase fuel economy by 2 or more percent. Speeding and rapid acceleration reduces fuel economy anywhere from 5 to 33 percent depending on your individual driving habits. Added weight that you don't need reduces fuel economy significantly. We're all guilty of this one. Only using the dash air conditioner when it is absolutely necessary will save a significant amount of fuel. For gasoline engines, use regular gas unless the owner's manual specifies a higher octane gas. You're just throwing money away when you pay the extra money for premium fuel. These fuel economy tips were taken from our Drive Your Motor Home Like a Pro DVD. This DVD is full of great RV driving information from a professional driver and hosted by Mark. If you would like to learn how to drive your motor home like a pro in the comfort of your own home or RV, visit www.rveducation101.com. In 1945, Elmer Weaver organized the Yellowstone Coach Company in Wakarusa, Indiana, just outside of Elkhart. After World War II, travel trailer production quickly grew in the Elkhart, Indiana area, and by the onset of the next decade, there were over 35 companies manufacturing trailers in the Elkhart area alone. By 1950, Elkhart was tagged by many as a trailer capital of the world. Yellowstone trailers were popular during the time and were said to be exceptionally well built but a little on the heavy side. It was also said Yellowstone travel trailers were the choice for traveling carnival employees. Here are some interesting facts about our Yellowstone project trailer. It is a 1967 Cavalier model. From tongue to bumper it measures a little over 16 feet long and based on some old advertisements I found it weighed in at just under 2,500 pounds with a hitch weight of 245 pounds. The interior height is 6 feet 2 inches tall and the overall width is 7 feet. The standard measurement for a travel trailer in the RV industry is from the front of the tongue to the rear bumper. This means a 16 foot trailer will have approximately 13 feet of usable living space. Not much room based on today's standard, but back in the day that was a pretty nice amount of space for a camping trip. Old Yellowstone advertisements I ran across stated that a well-balanced 13-footer is 6 feet 6 inches wide, sleeps 4 to 6 or 4 to 8 very comfortably in your choice of floor plans. I hope those eight people got along really well with each other, especially if it was raining outside. RV News and Entertainment, join RV Education 101 on Facebook and Twitter. The RV information is updated on a regular basis, and we offer discounts and specials to all of our friends on these social networks. You can join in on the fun by going to www.rvconsumer.com and clicking on Facebook or Twitter. Happy RV learning!
If you're looking for a great coastal camping area along the east coast to go camping at, don't miss out on the KOA in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Let's look at why this is a must-visit camping destination for this camping season. You simply won't find a better camping location in this vacation mecca than the Myrtle Beach KOA. Established more than 40 years ago, it's now in the heart of this coastal city's myriad attractions. The Myrtle Beach KOA is within walking distance of two amusement and water parks, four miniature golf courses, live music theaters like the Carolina Opry, more than 40 restaurants, and of course, dazzling sand beaches. Don't forget to visit the NASCAR Speed Park, and if you like to play golf, practice your game on the more than 100 golf courses located in the area. With all of this fun and convenience right outside of your RV's door, you will be delightfully surprised by the campground setting with shady trees scattered among mature trees. If you don't have an RV, don't worry. There's plenty of camping cabins, lodges, and park homes to accommodate you and your family. The Myrtle Beach KOA offers amenities galore. 50 amp max sites, 80 foot max length, Wi-Fi, cable TV, swimming pool, propane, firewood, fishing, pavilion, bike rentals, splash pad, jumping pillow, outdoor cinema, and a campfire theater, just to name a few. There really are too many local attractions to list, so pack up the RV, the family, and pets, and make the Myrtle Beach KOA a cool place to visit this year. For more information on the Myrtle Beach KOA or other KOA campgrounds, visit www.koa.com. Let's take another sneak peek at some of the neat stuff I saw for 2011 at the National RVIA trade show in Louisville, Kentucky this past December. What will they think of next? Slide outs, slide outs, and more slide outs. RV manufacturers like this Fleetwood Motorhome keep finding new places to put slide outs and we enjoy the added space they provide us. If you own a Type A motorhome that was built on an F53 Ford chassis, this picture gives you an idea of what the chassis looks like before they start to manufacture the motorhome. One feature I was glad to see on some of the towables at the RBIA show was a wider stance axle intended to help with trailer sway. Any improvement in the area of safety is great news for the RV consumer. Here is an Eddie Bauer edition Airstream with a rear hatch that I saw in Louisville. My first thought was, what about mosquitoes? But upon further investigation, I found a screen that rolls down to seal it off when the hatch is open. Pretty cool, huh? Stay tuned for more RV 2011 updates on our next episode of Mark's RV Garage. Today we're going where few RVers ever go. That's right, on the RV roof. To get the maximum life expectancy from your RV roof, it's important that you keep it clean and maintained. Routine cleaning and maintenance will literally add years of life to your RV roof. Let me show you what you can do to extend the life of your RV roof. Safety first. Be extremely careful whenever you are working on your RV roof. You can be seriously injured from a fall. You have to get on the roof of the RV to properly clean and inspect it for any damage or potential water leaks. Some RV roofs are more structurally sound than others. It may be necessary to use a couple 2x4 pieces of plywood or particle board to help distribute your weight on the roof. RV manufacturers use different materials like rubber, vinyl, fiberglass, and aluminum to construct RV roofs. Consult your RV owner's manual for the type of roofing material used and for the type of soap or detergent required to properly clean the RV roof. These different manufacturers provide different instructions for cleaning, sealing, and maintaining their product. Keeping debris such as leaves, tree sap, and branches off of the roof will help to extend the life of the roofing material. If at all possible, try to avoid parking the RV under trees. The sun and UV rays can also damage components and sealants on the RV roof, especially over time. If your RV is not stored inside a building or under some type of shelter, you may want to consider purchasing a cover for the RV when it is in storage. 
Many RV owner manuals recommend specified intervals for inspecting, cleaning, and sealing the RV roof. For rubber or vinyl roofs, never use any cleaners or conditioners that contain petroleum solvents, harsh abrasives, or citrus ingredients. These types of cleaners can cause permanent damage to any rubber or vinyl surface. Most manufacturers recommend products for cleaning the roof surface. For the sake of this demonstration, the rubber roof manufacturer recommends you use a medium bristle brush and a non-abrasive cleaner. For light cleaning, you can use warm water and a mild detergent like Dawn dishwashing liquid. For more difficult cleaning and to condition and protect the roof, there are commercial cleaning products designed specifically for the type of roofing material your RV has. Hard to clean areas like stubborn stains caused by leaves, sap, mold, or mildew may require a second treatment. Start at the front of the roof and work your way to the back. Keep in mind that the roof surface can be extremely slippery when using soap and water. Also, pay attention to obstacles on the roof like air conditioners and vents protruding from the surface. Use caution to prevent any cleaners from getting on the sides of the RV. Always rinse the sides, front, and back of your RV before and after rinsing the roof to prevent cleaners from streaking or damaging the graphics and finish on your RV sidewalls. Cleaning your RV roof is extremely important, but there are other things you need to do like inspecting the roof for leaks and sealing the roof periodically. For more in-depth information on RV roof care and maintenance, check out the online e-course available at www.rvvideosondemand.com and our RV care and maintenance DVD available at www.rveducation101.com. P.S. Keep safety in mind and be careful whenever you are working on your RV roof. Tyler! Tyler, where are you? I can never seem to find Tyler when it's time to do the dirty work. Oh well, thanks for joining us on another episode of Mark's RV Garage. Travel safe and have fun in your RV, and remember, when it comes to learning about your RVs, we've got you covered. We'll see you right back here on our next episode of Mark's RV Garage.